Hi, I'm Russ Barlow. I uh, am a former airline pilot. Been flying for about uh, 50 years, military, civilian, and uh, airline, and recently retired and have taken up flight simulation as a hobby. I've been seeking after the most realism, but trying to keep the price affordable. And I think I've found some, uh, some interesting things that I'd like to share with you. I think I've found some very good ways at an affordable price to have some very, very realistic flight simulation experience. So come along with me now for a little uh, journey and I'll show, you, uh, I'll show you some of what I've learned. So when I started looking at simulators again as a hobby, I was blown away by the quality of the flight handling characteristics and the, uh, the visuals. But I hated having to pick up a mouse or keyboard every time I wanted to flip a switch in the cockpit. It's just so unrealistic. And that's when I ran across Air Manager. Now this panel you see uh, is an Air Manager panel that uh, enables you to display instruments that can run on the same computer or a different computer. This was my first big step towards improving my simming experience. You can arrange these paid and free instruments any way you like to create your own instrument layouts that are fully interactive so that you can control the sim using a mouse or if you have a touch screen as here by just touching the screen. Air Manager costs about uh, 65 euros and offers uh, pay panels like you see here that are about 10 euros also about 450 instruments in its free instrument store. The interaction is quite realistic and it gets rid of the mouse and keyboard controlling things realistically with your hands. For dials you just touch the dial it highlights in blue and then you can move your finger around to set the dial or knob just as you would in a real airplane. For stack knobs like on this radio you have to touch a fairly narrow band so it's a little more difficult but it does the job and this was a game-changing moment for me in flight simulation. So for a two to three hundred dollar investment in a touch screen, you really can add tremendous realism to your sim experience. I've only seen about a one frame per second drop in uh, X-Plane's frame rate when I run Air Manager alongside. Now the only thing about touch, uh, the touch knobs is that if you're uh, you have to make contact with the knob, take your finger outside and make that circle, and if your finger drops off like that, you can find yourself uh, missing the mark. So you have to pay attention, and that's one thing that's not quite so realistic. So we tried to figure out a solution for that. Since the knobs were the only obvious weak point in the touchscreen system, we thought, what if we could create a knob that can control every knob on the touchscreen? An inner knob? that corresponds to the inner knob and an outer knob that corresponds to the outer knob and a push button. And if there's only one knob, either knob can control the knob on screen. So using Air Manager's new Arduino support, my good friend Chuck uh, Kendall and I came up with this design for a knob and we were able to convince the guys at Sim Innovations who make Air Manager to make this a built-in feature to support this. So here in the interface for our manager, you can see it's quite easy. There's the uh, Baron panel, and we have the instruments that make up that panel listed. And if we uh, we can move those instruments around and resize them and lay make the layout, that's how it is set up. But to add the Nopster support is quite simple. You can see I go to the Devices tab, and you can see that that Nopster is connected. And then we go to the uh, the uh, panel settings. Well, first we can set either touch control or non-touch control. And in the panel settings, we can scroll down and look for the Knobster setting, and we just turn it to Knobster on. And now the magic begins. So now when we select the knob, when we touch it, it's going to turn yellow instead of blue to tell us the Knobster is active. And then the outer knob can control the whole frequency and the small knob corresponds to the small knob and controls the fractional part of the frequency. Now version 3.4 of Air Manager not only supports Knobster but also transparency so if you place a screen for the GPS behind a panel 
and create a transparent opening, you can put a bezel on there, which gives you the option to use Knobster for that too. So when you touch the knob, now the inner outer knob and the push button carry out those functions. Of course, the touch functions on the bezel are no problem, but the knobs now can give you that advantage too. And uh, it uh, works extremely well. Of course, the other knob the same way, you touch that knob, now you can control uh, the outer knob and the inner knob and the push button. And you have most of the functionality of a hardware G530 at a fraction of the cost. So I think uh, a touchscreen coupled with a Knobster, as we call it, will open up a myriad of possibilities for simmers who've been just operating a sim with one or two screens, three screen visuals, and uh, not an instrument panel. Uh, you can get an awful lot of controls that you can use without a mouse or keyboard for a very marginal cost. Now, in my simulator, I have three 50-inch screens that I operate uh, for the visual, which gives me with a 60 degree rake back a 180 degree field of view, which I find great. But uh, just by adding that touch screen, it adds a tremendous amount of realism. Throw in an iPad, I use uh, Flight, uh, Flight Plan Go, a free program, not as good as for flight, but certainly great for simming. Uh, and you've got quite, nice, quite a nice setup for a very marginal cost. Now, I have also built a bezel for the G1000, and you can see I, I threw together a cockpit here, uh, an instrument panel, I should say. I just took some uh, instruments from the store and put them on a, uh, an overlay there, and you can see the uh, buttons are all there for the G1000. Now, I'm flying this with the uh, Cirrus, that is a standard X-plane aircraft. And it's just a great experience flying this thing around, being able to reach up there and touch uh, the controls. And uh, uh, with my three visuals, it's just a great experience. The idea that you can replace every knob in a hardware cockpit with one knob. And when you add touch control, you have con all the buttons and other controls available. It's just, uh, it's just a, a really good solution that's not very expensive and it gives you the flexibility of flying multiple aircraft types and not being locked into a specific cockpit layout. You can even create your own instruments if you really want to using Air Manager's uh, instrument creation tools. So now on the visual approach into uh, one of my favorite places on the earth, uh, Grand Cayman where I spend a some time each winter. Beautiful beaches down there, nice people. I'd love to see the model of this airport uh, done. They're building a new terminal down here. It would be awesome to have the whole island modeled. Used to fly in here when I was uh, with the airlines also. Always one of my favorite places. Any rate, uh, you can see the uh, all the controls available here. The Knobster allowing uh, to set uh, the, any of the knobs on the cockpit with, using X-Plane's uh, uh, pop-out windows for the MFD and PFD. So the plans for Knobster are to make it available in two, two ways. First of all, my friend Chuck Kindle uh, Simware Kits is going to offer a kit that resembles the one that we made. It'll have a PCB, a printed circuit board, uh, include a Elma encoder, which is really uh, top line, and uh, and uh, plans to to put this thing together. And for those who want to do a uh, true do-it-yourself, we're going to make available some open source information so that you could uh, pick up a dual encoder with a push button and uh, a Nano uh, from uh, an Arduino Nano and build this thing uh, from scratch, just using wires and your own project box. Our main goal is to get it out there and make it available so people can enjoy it. But we did want to make a kit available for those who wanted to have the, the kind of cool looking design that uh, Chuck came up with. 
uh, very compact and uh, we have some real neat mounting options with some 3D printed parts that will make all that available online. So if you'd like to find out more about uh, Knobster, subscribe to this channel. We also have a website, thenobster.com. You can go there and sign up to show your interest, uh, to be included in updates, or uh, as I said, I'll be doing some more videos showing building uh, the Knobster with the kit and building the Knobster uh, from scratch. And uh, we figure for about $20, you could probably build it if you uh, want to have uh, just a cheap encoder. If you want the good quality, nice uh, kit that we're going to offer with the uh, nice case, it's going to cost a little more, but still uh, probably about uh, $60 for the kit, which would include the PCB and the uh, encoder. You'd have to add a $5 nano, and uh, you can get the plastic parts printed for probably $5 or so at 3D Hubs. So we'll have all that information online so you can decide which fits you best, and we hope that uh, we'll have lots of interest in the Knobster. Uh, I really think it is a game changer for uh, home flight simulation. If you also think this is a good idea, I wish you'd share this with your friends who are simmers uh, so they're aware of it too. Thanks a lot.